Hey everyone, this is Hypo Owl, and welcome back to more Let's Play Sabrina the Animated Series Zat. In the last episode, we finished the school level, and in this episode, we'll be starting level 2, the dock. So starting off, you can notice that the bum right-hand corner that we have 11 animals to save. Well, the reality is that we can actually just walk in a straight line and save 8 of them. And this is what I was talking about last episode, where this is one of the levels where getting the stars isn't really all that worth it. Where we'll, we'll be getting four of them from the get-go, from the point where we save the eighth animal in this level. But, in all honesty, you could, you could just as easily do it without them, but I just like getting them anyway. I just like collecting the presents for some reason. So this is one of the trickier enemies in the game for me anyway, are these crab enemies. Because the tendency is to jump on them just just all willy-nilly, but when but you, if you don't want to get hurt, then you actually have to wait on them to move, and I, I love how I just decided to disregard my own advice and just jumped on them anyway. I'm telling you, there's that tendency, and that, this is one of the levels where um, I was talking about last episode, where this game ha is, has a lot of interesting things related to Shantae, like this area of Pat, this whole level really is almost like a mix between like the area leading up to Watertown and then Scu the, um, Scuttle Town, especially like the Mimic's Dock area. And so this is the last animal we have to save on this on this little area. And so here we have a new power up or item, whatever you want to call it. This is basically the ground pound for Mario. Now here's the interesting thing about this level is that you can actually die here. And that will take us to the beginning of the level, and here we can use our ground pound to get down here. And there are actually two more crabs down here that we need to save. There's the first one, and then down here is the second one. And so, here's a heart also if you want it, I'm going to need that right now. I would say don't worry about the hearts if you know where they are. I would say don't worry about getting them unless you, do, unless you really need them, because the hearts don't despawn. And so we'll go over here, and so something that I wanted to talk about is that is, this is really not nothing like real important, but this just the difference between like power-ups and tools. Like like not I don't consider any of the items that you get in this game to be power-ups. The only thing I would even remotely consider a power-up is like the stars. When you get all five of them and you get that get this large beam here, is that I would consider anything a power-up just to be anything where it actually like you do more damage or like it lets it lets you do something with more it lets you do more damage basically like the um I guess you do damage with the stars here but not really because you don't really harm the animals in any way I would consider more the um all the items that you get in this level to be more or this game rather be more like tools and so this is like exactly like the first level except we have seven enemy seven animals to save by walking in a straight line and so one neat thing that I love about this game is that no an no animals, I mean no level has the same two animals from the previous level. Like they're all different animals in the. Well, each each level has has its own unique set of animals to save. Anyway, that's what I'm trying to say. So we'll keep walking. And so here we have a new enemy. This is the fish. This is basically like the chowder from Mario 2. And so what you don't want to do is jump on it while just as it's leaving from underneath the dock. Because it'll just, it'll just stay trapped underneath the dock, and you have to wait for it to despawn and come back. But I think one thing that I love about Way Forward's earlier games is that look at the expression that that they can give on these sprites. It's just it just gives the give all the all the um all the enemies and your heroes like just su just such a great character. It's just it's just a really neat touch. So I think that was number four. So we come back here, we can get Salem. So we'll take Salem and walk over here. I'll just keep walking. Actually, we need the ground pound. Actually, that's what we need Salem for, is that we have to eat, use the ground pound over, I mean, get down here and then get the ground pound for Sabrina. So we get that, we can come back over here. Now, I just want you to listen to something real quick, just. Is it just me or does that jump sound sound a little reminiscent to like Mario and Luigi's jump sound from Superstar Saga? And that's another thing that's kind of interesting to me, is that why do we have sound in games that we jump- I know that that probably originated like from Donkey Kong, where Mario makes that brrrr sound when he jumps, that kind of like springy jump sound. Well, I guess it kind of makes sense because he could jump higher than most people, so it, that kind of makes sense that that spring sound is there. Maybe he has some like some kind of spring thing in his shoes or something, I don't know. This is something to think about because, you know, we don't make sound usually 
or at least our feet don't make sound when we jump in reality so it's just kind of interesting that is that that's that there now that I think about it it's like why do we have sound when we jump in the first place and so I'm gonna go back over here wait for this fish to come back and take out this blue this brick here so I'll take Sabrina get this fish Alright, so this brick area, we can actually jump down here, and this is basically just a shortcut back to where we just were. And so then, I believe, yeah, this is the last star. So we come back here, jump down. There's a lot of ground pound areas, that's for sure. So there's the fish. Take that. So what we can get, we can bring Salem all the way back to that area. And then there's another area where we, where we actually need to get the multi-jump. Which I love. What's that's one thing that's really cool about this game is that all the t all the items that you get can be used um, as you get them. Like, th like there's the, you see there's a total of four slots, so it's kind of obvious that we'll be getting four items throughout this game. So here we have the multi jump, and so we ha now we have the multi jump and the ground pound. And one thing that I would say about the ground pound that I didn't mention before is that it's probably not wise to ground pound on enemies because. For some reason, whenever you ground pound on enemies, it counts as you getting hurt as well as them getting stunned. So we'll jump up here to get these crabs. I believe there's another one over, yep, over here. And so then there's one more on one of these kind of ledge areas. And it's up here-ish, I believe. Yeah, it's past this one ground pound area, I think. Or actually not too far from, not that ground pound. Okay, this one. So then get this crab, and so the exit will be on the other side of this wall here. So we'll jump up here, and we will exit. So speaking about the theme of this level about beaches, is that... What are some of you guys' other hobbies besides gaming? Um, I bring this up because I live, like, close to the beach. I mean, I live in Florida, so there's beaches everywhere. The whole coastline's a dang beach, for goodness sake. So, um, I would say probably mine is drawing i mean yeah I'm, I'm more of an art student at, i mean college right now i'm taking i actually had to switch my major over from graphic design since i didn't get in our school's program so now i'm painting drawing printmaking major so another thing about the another thing about the beach is that i i enjoy walking on the beach but i just don't like getting in the water i think part of that is because of a little episode that happened in when i was in eighth grade over the summer so, my mom wanted me and my sister to get into other things, like, just, just to stay busy over the summer so we don't get in, so we're just not in the house all day, just something to do. So, she gets the idea where, because we like to go to the pool every summer, or at least we did back then. And so, well, she she wanted us to do something more than just go to the pool. We actually tried to go to, um, get, tried to get us into team sports, even though I had been playing soccer for about a year, and my sister was doing gymnastics. I think it was about that time where she was just getting out of gymnastics, but anyway, she took us to the pool for these kind of like tryouts for the local swim team, and so then one of the tr one of the things we had to do for tryouts was that we had to swim to one in the pool and then back, just the um just to swim a lap basically around the pool. But one of the things is that I wasn't really in the most I wasn't in exactly in peak physical condition back in eighth grade. So by the time we got out the pool, I was pro it felt like somebody had placed like a 40 pound lead vest on me and I could, I was having so much trouble breathing. And so between, so now I'm a junior in college and that was back in eighth grade. And I'm here to tell you, I've probably been in a pool like once or twice in between there. You know, that kind of, com that, pre that was pretty much the last time me and my sister went to the pool over the summer, let's put it that way. So I believe this is, oh, this is just another star, so. I think another star should be here pretty soon, so... One thing to note about this level is that it is very maze-like, and this is probably one of the levels where it is very evident, or it, it very it uses the whole teamwork between Salem and Sabrina very well. So that even though it gives, it gives sort of that challenge since Salem can't attack anything, but instead, he's basically just here just to... It's just basically like a fetch quest, essentially. It's like, it's like kind of what, that's basically the start of this level. It's kind of like a, almost a literal fest, fetch quest. Let's jump over here, and I, this should, oh, this is just a hard, actually we need that, like very badly. So, I'm trying to remember where the multi-jump is. I think it's up here, or was this a star? I don't remember right offhand. So, let's go look for, oh, I think it's actually right here. That's actually what we need, need Sam to get now that I think about it. 
So there's that. Now that we have the star, we can go and get all the rest of the animals in this game if we don't hit them below the docks. So there's that and this fish. So if that ever happens to you, you can just walk over to the, the you can just walk over and just wait for him to despawn. And I think this fish should be back now. Yeah. To save her, go back over here and wait for this fish to jump out. There we go. So we have three more enemy, three more animals to save. I, it's always that tendency to want to call them enemies for some reason. So I believe that the last three animals are actually, well, there's one right there. They actually should be like in the end of the last level where they're above, like on these ledges that you can't get to unless you have the multi-jump here. So that's not over there. I believe there's one over here. Yeah, it's that one. And then there is another one, I believe. Okay, no, that's the exit. There should be another one over up here somewhere, I believe. Oh. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you write maps for because <laughs> it's hilarious because I actually wrote I actually wrote down where all the locations of the fish are or all the animals are to save just so this very thing wouldn't happen. I just spent like the last five, six minutes just looking for this last fish. So this is one of the things about this level is that it's very maze-like if you couldn't tell. It's, it's nothing like the last two levels where you just walk straight and you can basically just complete like over half the level. This one actually takes some doing, and it's what, it's really cool that they that you get to use Salem and Sabrina, like how they use Sabrina and Salem like they did in this level in order to complete it. Alright, so this level is not nearly as maze-like as the last one was, even though it's even though we have 14 animals to say we can come to the left here, and there's gonna be three stars down here right off the bat, which is pretty good because I would totally recommend getting the stars for this level. And then there's also two animals left to save down here. So just wait for the fish to come back up. You know, looking at this level now, I'm starting to wonder just what beach looks like this, to be honest with you. Because there's never a waterfall next to a dot. Well, there may be one somewhere, I don't know, but I've never seen it and it just doesn't look natural, you know? I'm starting to theorize that maybe it has something to do with Sabrina's magic turning all the students into animals and maybe, like, some of the magic rubbed off of the animals and, like... It just turned the beach into like one giant sand castle because we see these, gi these giant walls of sand everywhere and it's almost as if like they're preparing for like some sort of natural disaster like a tsunami or something but it's just it's just very interesting to think about i mean i i mean that's the only explanation i can think of but let's come over here and we're going to go all the way to the left and just jump straight down and get salem so Salem has only one use and one use only in this level just go down and the crab is jumping it's just it thinks it's a fish all of a sudden, so there's our exit as well. There's another star here. So there's fish also, but this is the only thing that we need to get is this multi-jump. So we'll take the multi-jump, and then there's going to be a le that ledge up there, which I always seem to forget is there. No matter how many times I play this level, I always forget this, just like this area, because it just doesn't look... Because it's, it's like, it's more underground, you know, so you, would, you wouldn't think that it would have like these ledges up here. So there's also this our, our fish crab down here, so let's zap him back. And so you know, playing this level again, um, I'm starting to get, I'm starting to have that feeling that I did when I was a kid, like playing this level for the first time, and just how happy I was to just to get to this area, because because it was like when I got here, it almost felt like I just accomplished something major. Because I I was terrible at this game as a kid. I probably only beat it like once or so. Because I've been hearing a lot of people say that they're actually they were actually a lot better at games when they were kids and than they are now. For me, it is quite the opposite. Because I remember I'm playing games now that took me almost a year to beat that I'm beating in like three days or so. Because I would I, like, for example, I'll, I'll use like um, Kirby's Dream, Kirby's Nightmare Dream, like for example, because the King DDD fight in that game is I don't know what it is about it about that as a kid like I can never like I can never beat it like I mean I did eventually beat it but I mean I was just not good at it at all but like it's something like that I could beat it and 100% it mind you in probably like a good three days or so because the game is actually just that easy so there's a couple more enemies I mean more animals left to save so it's also so like I'm so used to calling them enemies or something so there's also this pelican down here 
some weird reason, like, they just stuff them down here. It's like one giant bird cage, and they give them, like, this feeder full of, like, I don't know, hot dogs. I, I, I imagine pelicans aren't aren't particular about what they eat, you know, they have, they have big mouths as it is, so they probably eat anything. So there's also, there should be a couple enemies up here near the ledge. Actually, I'm probably missing the, like, one down here. There's also another heart in there if you want it, so let's get our crab. So we'll go back out. And I believe now if there's two and there's a um and there's a level like this, the chances are it just might be on a ledge somewhere. So see, I actually got the ones down here. So okay, th it's this one. That's that's it. All right. So the crab, that's one. Now there's now the last one I'd imagine is not too far from here. Uh. This is why I write things down. It might be back up here, actually. Oh, you know what? I think I, I think I know. Yep, here it is. All right. So with that, I'm going to go back to the exit and fight our boss, which is also fairly easy. So it should be down here. I, we are we are we are already near it. I know exactly where it is. Okay. So. Our boss here. What you want to do is just keep running. That's all you want to do for this first part is just keep running. It'll raise its tentacles out of the water three times. So that's two. That's three. Make sure you don't get hit either. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it, if, you, if you hadn't guessed, it's a giant squid. So, it'll shoot ink. It'll jump onto the dock. And we have to jump on it, rinse and repeat. Speaking of squids, who else is excited as I am for Splatoons? I'm ready to roll some people over, man. That looks that look so f I'm, I gotta get some people's Nintendo IDs so we can play that sometimes because I- It just looks so- too good to pass up. So we'll wait for the squid again to shoot its ink. And jump on it. And rinse and repeat. And I'm not exactly too worried about dying. Because this boss is that easy anyway, so... It's like the rest of this game. Like, I was going back to this, um... To the, um... That whole thing about not being good at games, and as I was as a, I mean, as a kid, I mean, I, I could probably be the, you could probably beat this game in probably a good two hours or so, if you're really that speedy. But that's it. We saved Chloe, and that's gonna do it for this episode. I'd like to thank you all for watching. This has been Hypo Allo, and until next time, I'll see y'all later.